it's uh, I can't even get through these warnings fast enough. Uh, right now, it looks like we have at least at least eight tornadoes on the ground, guys, mm. from the Texas uh, Panhandle all the way up into southwestern Nebraska. And some of these have caused the damage. Let me just read you here. National Weather Service radar tracking a tornado uh, that touched down along Highway 273. That's east of Amarillo here. That's the cell uh, in Gray County, which uh, has overturned a tractor trailer. Also caused some damage, we believe, and injuries there in Gray County. There was a storm earlier in Beaver County, Oklahoma. That's pulled off to the north. They think there's been injuries with that. And uh, I, I was hearing Dr. Forbes possibly even, even a death uh, with that one. Storm chasers reporting a tornado five miles east of Montezuma. So now we're up here in the southwestern Kansas. This is what we just got. Uh, through doing in the last 10 minutes, looking at where we actually have tornadoes on the ground. You can see it is a busy night, ladies and gentlemen. Everything that's going up here is pretty much spinning, and unfortunately, st spotters are out all over the place confirming that tornadoes are actually on the ground, and potentially that means we have damage. So a dangerous night today across the Texas Panhandle, across the uh, western Kansas, across the southwestern part of Nebraska as well with all this. So here are the storms, and all of these have the potential to spin whether you have a tornado warning out or not. The big cell is right here, moving uh, again from uh, Donnelly County up into Gray County. The storm that's been producing the damage is already across I-40. That's going to be east of Pampa, and we all know about the tornado way back when in Pampa. Uh, so you, get, you pretty much can be very well aware of what tornadoes can do in the Pampa area. These will continue to move north. There's no reason why they shouldn't continue to rotate as they pull on to the north. There's Pampa, Texas, and again, a lot of these storms starting to gel together, uh, but all of them are rotating. Storm moving up through Beaver, Kansas, or excuse me, Beaver, Oklahoma, or, uh, Beaver, Oklahoma here, and that continues to pull onto the north near Meade. Again, tornado warnings out for these cells as they continue to pull north. And also in Goodland, Kansas, a tornado down to your south. Uh, we need to watch that one as it could come very, very close to your area as well. And into southwestern Nebraska, several reports of uh, tornadoes, tracking tornadoes, storm spotters, uh, again, as I mentioned, um, looking at those tornadoes uh, in southeast of Goodland, also up toward Montezuma, southwest of Grant, a tornado located on the ground there. That's in the central Chase and central Perkins County. All right. Let's bring in our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, so I can get Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It's certainly a dangerous situation tonight. Right now, on the phone, live with us, we have Randy Hicks, a storm chaser in Kansas, in Brewster, Kansas. What are you seeing right now, Randy? We're seeing, we're seeing two large wedge tornadoes. We're between Brewster and Edison. The tornadoes are approximately 15 to 18 miles. One is due north, and one is northwest of us. These are both very large and violent tornadoes. I've never seen anything quite like this before, especially at dark. Hey, Randy, you said that first wedge tornado about a half mile wide, you're at your estimate. It's been on the ground since, uh, what, 825 local time? Is, is it still on the ground right now? It, is, it still seems to be on the ground. It's hard to tell from this vantage point. Yes, it's definitely on the ground. I just saw it on a lightning flash. And we have another wedge that's even is every bit as large as it now, just, just to the due west of that location, the little southwest. Randy, d describe for me what it was like just coming upon like the first supercell. How how quick did this develop into a tornado situation? It, it, it was really quite explosive. Um, we were a little bit west. We were just south of Brewster when we first uh, heard the tornado warning that went up for the Sharon Springs, I believe was the name of that town. And we went uh, south there about five miles, and we South turned onto a dirt road, went down about three miles, and we stopped where we got a good view, and we filmed the first tornado as it was uh, in a trunk shape as it started to rope out with lightning lighting it up. Then we got up on 70 and started heading west, our second tornado. And then the third tornado was probably the best uh, videographic tornado of the day. It touched down just north of 70, probably a mile. And we were just right on 70 when we shot it, right as the sun had went down. Ooh, big lightning in that wedge. And, Randy, uh, you, again, you're a storm chaser. So how many tornadoes ha have you seen so far? What's, what's the running uh, tally so far this evening? We, we were kind of losing count. I mean, I, I knew I'd, there were six or seven there at one time, but... I think around seven or eight at this point. Some of them were quite brief, so, you know, you just get so caught up in the moment and trying to focus on staying safe that, you know, it's not like keeping a notch in a gun. You don't count every one sometimes. And, Randy, how do you stay safe out there? Well, fortunately, right now we're on the southern end, which is typically where you would want to be in this kind of a situation. Okay, our other wedge seems to be off the ground now, the one to the west. It is a, a large wall at this moment. It looks like a large funnel, but it, it's not on the ground, what I can tell at this moment. And most people, Randy, don't know what a tornado looks like. Describe right now what you're seeing, the colors, the shapes, how big. Well, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's north of us. Everything's kind of dark and black, but you can kind of see a little bit of, of the late evening light, you know. And then when the lightning will strike, or the, it seems like the lightning's always near the vortex. You know, when that lightning strikes, it just, it just grabs you by your heart just instantly. It's just so beautiful. It, it's really hard to explain to people. 
And Randy, could you explain to our viewers uh, what type of, what part of the country this is? Is it uh, developed? Is it more rural? Is it ranch it land, is, farmland? It is, very, it is very rural out here. I mean, uh, uh, some of the roads we were on today, we got off on some, on some back dirt roads, and they'd had a lot of rain up in this area, and I'm driving a two-wheel drive vehicle, and uh, I mean, it got pretty hairy there a few times, but... That's just part of chasing, you know, you, you, you get good roads, you get bad roads, you just take what you get. All right. Randy Hicks, live for us tonight, you a storm it, chaser on the ground in Kansas. Thank you very much. Really interesting to hear him talk about as he's seeing it. And he's been a storm chaser for years, and to say he's seen some of the most incredible f ideas and incredible tornadoes you've ever seen.